beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, as you probably know, Game of Thrones is my absolute favorite television show. However, there are problems that come with adapting a book series as expansive as A Song of Ice and Fire into a television show, and that means some information is not conveyed in the television show as best as it could be. The first time I was watching Game of Thrones, there were some things that confused me. Like, for instance, oh, okay, Jon Snow's last name is Snow because he's a bastard. Oh, and so is Ramsay's. So does that mean every bastard has the last name Snow? Oh, wait, it differs depending on what region the bastard was born in? Oh, I didn't realize. Or, you know, oh, look, Rob and Talissa are getting married. That's so nice. Oh, what are all these things they're saying in their vows? Mother, warrior, smith, maiden. What the hell does that mean? Oh, those are the seven gods they believe in in the South? Oh, I didn't realize that. I hear them talking about the seven all the time, but I didn't really know what that means. You get what I'm trying to say here? One thing that really threw me for a loop when I was reading the book series for the first time is that the Baratheons and the Targaryens are actually related to each other. I mean, you think it would have come up on the TV show that Robert Baratheon and Rhaegar Targaryen were actually cousins. I mean, come on, that's like, what? I'm going to be talking about that and more today in this video, which I am calling Unexpected Relatives in Game of Thrones. Today I'm going to be telling some stories about some surprising connections between characters which are mentioned in the A Song of Ice and Fire book series, but never quite made their way to the television show. So if you are a television show only watcher and don't feel like picking up these 900 page books, I mean they're amazing, but I get it, some people don't have that kind of time on their hands, then in this video I'm going to be giving you those kind of fun anecdotes that a TV show only watcher would never be exposed to. So before the start of Game of Thrones, there was a king known as Aegon V. He was the younger brother of Maester Aemon, known as Aegon the Unlikely, because he had three older brothers who all came before him in the line of succession, and he ended up becoming king. That isn't really relevant to this video, so we won't go into that. Now, Aegon and his wife, Betha Blackwood, had several children. There was Prince Duncan, who was the heir apparent. Then there was Jaehaerys, his sister, Shayra, another brother, Daron, and a younger sister, Rael. Now, Aegon arranged all these betrothals for his children, but a lot of them ended up deciding they didn't want to go through with the betrothals their father had arranged. His eldest son, Duncan, fell in love with a common woman named Jenny of Oldstones and gave up his right to the throne in order to marry her. Then Jay Harris and Shayra decided they were in love with each other and they eloped behind their parents' backs. By the time Aegon found out, they had already consummated and there was nothing that he could do. In the text, it is heavily implied that Daron was gay, so he decided he didn't want to go through with his betrothal either. Quick side note, the woman that he was betrothed to was a lady known as Olena Redwine, who later ended up becoming the woman we know as Olena Tyrell, the Queen of Thorns. So that leaves the youngest sister, Rael, and Rael was the only one of the siblings who didn't get to choose her husband. She ended up marrying a guy named Ormond Baratheon because the Baratheons felt spurned since Duncan had broken his betrothal to a Baratheon girl, so Rael ended up marrying a Baratheon Baratheon instead. We don't know what her relationship with Ormond was exactly like, but we do know they had one son together, Stefan. Meanwhile, Rael's married siblings, Jaehaerys and Shayra, had two children, Aerys Targaryen and Rhaella Targaryen. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. It could be Ra-Ella, but I, I don't know. I say Rhaella, so that's what I'm going with in this video. But Aerys Targaryen is the person who we know as the Mad King. So Aerys was cousins with Rael's son, Stefan. Now, while you may not know who Stefan Baratheon is, you definitely know his children. He married a woman named Kasana Estermont, and before the two of them died in a shipwreck, they had three sons together, Robert, Stannis, and Renly. This is how the Baratheons and the Targaryens are related. Obviously, Aerys and Ra Rhaella had three children together, Rhaegar, Viserys, and Daenerys. So that means Rhaegar, Viserys, and Daenerys are second cousins with Robert, Stannis, and Renly, since their respective sets of parents were first cousins. 
So this means John is actually related to the Baratheons too, since his biological father was Rhaegar Targaryen, though he is a little more distantly related to them. Robert, Stannis, and Renly would have been John's second cousins once removed, since John's biological father was their second cousin, and if John was one generation older, he would be their second cousin. Uh, a lot of people probably didn't know what once removed meant, which is why I just felt obligated to explain it there, because to be completely honest, I didn't know what it meant until like three months ago. And that means that Robert's children, including Gendry, all the other bastards are dead in the TV show canon, and Stannis' daughter Shireen are John's third cousins, since their parents were second cousins. That means that John, Gendry, and Shireen share the same great-great-grandfather, Aegon V. The problem is the TV show totally complicated this family tree. When Maester Aemon is talking to John about the Targaryen family tree, he he says that the Mad King is Aegon the fifth son, totally eliminating Jaehaerys the second and his reign. So that begs the question, does Rael Targaryen still exist in the TV show canon? Is she Aegon the fifth and Aemon's sister in the TV show canon? Or does she just not exist? If so, then who is Robert Stannis and Renly's grandmother? They just totally complicated the whole thing for no reason by eliminating an entire generation from the family tree. So Oh, I can't say for sure exactly how the Baratheons and the Targaryens are related in the TV show. If they are related at all, D&D just made a whole mess of things by eliminating Jaehaerys, and I just, I just don't want to deal with that right now. I don't have the energy. Now, something that is mentioned in the TV show is that the Starks and the Karstarks are related to each other. However, in my memory, it is never explained exactly how they are related. So today in this video, I figured I would tell you guys the origin story of House Karstark to let you know how they are distantly related to the Stark family. Basically, many, many years ago, one of the kings in the north, we don't know which one, had a younger son named Carlin. Now, Carlin was not his heir because he had at least one older brother in, for, in front of him in the line of succession. However, one day, Carlin went out and put down a rebel lord. His father was so impressed that he decided he was going to give Carlin his own castle and lands to rule. This castle became known as Carl's Hold, and Carlin Stark ruled it as its very first lord. However, over time, the name of this castle was shortened to simply Carhold. Now, usually when a house has a cadet branch, their castle is used to differentiate them. For example, the Lannisters have a cadet branch known as the Lannisters of Lannisport, since they don't live in Casterly Rock like the main branch of the Lannister family. They live in Lannisport. However, over time, instead of referring to the family that lived in Carhold as the Starks of Carhold, it all got shortened together to form the name Carstark. And this became the modern day house Car Stark as we know it. So the Starks and the Car Starks are related to each other. However, they are many, many generations removed. So it's not like they are going to be close cousins or anything. They do share blood, but that was many years ago. Finally, in this video, I want to discuss House Florent. If you are a TV show only watcher, you may not recognize the name House Florent. House Florent is a family from the Reach and is actually the house that Stannis Baratheon's wife, Selyse, belonged to. Florent is also the house of Melissa Tarly, Samuel Tarly's mother. Selyse, Stannis' wife, and Melissa, Sam's mother, were actually first cousins. So because Selyse and Melissa are related, that means not only was Shireen Baratheon third cousins with Jon Snow, she is also second cousins with Samwell Tarly since their parents were cousins. However, the family connections with House Florent do not stop there. Samwell Tarly also has an aunt whose name is Rhea Florent. Now, she married a man named Leighton Hightower. Leighton Hightower had many children including a daughter named Allery Hightower. She married a man whose name you will recognize from the TV show Mace Tyrell. That means Allery Hightower is the mother of Marjorie and Loras, as well as two more sons who are only in the books, Willis and Garland. 
It is not clear who Allery's mother was, if she is Rhea's daughter or not. I'm inclined to say no because it says on the World of Ice and Fire Ricky that she was Rhea was Leighton Hightower's fourth wife and significantly younger, but that means that the Tyrells and the Tarleys are somewhat related through marriage, but not related by blood. And remember how I said that Leighton Hightower had a whole bunch of children? Well, he had another daughter, Allery's sister, whose name was Liness. Liness was a beautiful young girl from Old Town with expensive taste, and at a tourney, Jorah Mormont fell for her. They were married very quickly after the tourney, and she became his second wife. This is why in the show Jorah Mormont ends up selling poachers into slavery way before the events of the TV show because he wanted to buy things for his wife since she had very expensive taste. So this means that Jorah is actually related to Marjorie and Loris, but only through his marriage to their aunt. They share no blood relation and Jorah didn't have any children with Liness, so Marjorie and Loris don't have any blood relatives in the Mormont family. So guys, that is it for this video today. Let me know which one of these unexpected relations do you find the most surprising? Are there any other unexpected relatives from the book series that I forgot to mention in this video? Let me know down in the comments. Please like this video if you enjoyed and let me know if you would like me to make more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye, see you next time.